Okay, my son shut us off because he his big <laughs> fingers touched the button. Sorry. <laughs> my bad. My fault. I don't know if you got to see, but this is my can opener. It's just a little like me. A full of power, like but tiny. Do first, the beans. Okay, you can uh, start open doing, the open the beans and the sauce, and we're going to dump it all into this pot together. Okay, lift it up. No, bring it over here. Lift it up. Lift it up. Turn it towards you so you can see. Just push it. Yeah, but sometimes it will stop, and you just have to do it. I got it, I got All right. it. You know how to do it now? Yes. It's temperamental, like me. You have to lift it up, start it again. Lift it up, start it again. I'm doing a better chef than who's doing this shit. It's temperamental, it doesn't like some cans. Some, it will open like, you know, gangbusters. The other ones. It doesn't like very much. So I'm adding water to our heading cabbage. And I'm going to boil the whole thing the way it is. I'm not going to cut it up. Do you have a, a hand can opener? No, Chris. Well, we do, but it's crap. Whatever, let me use this. Good luck with it. I'm not doing this shit. Watch your language. Are you serious? I told you it was crap. Do you have anything that works in this kitchen? <laughs> Everything works in this kitchen. Obviously not. You just have to know how to work it. Okay, go over there and turn on your cabbage. I'll do it. I'll open the cans and then you can do it. Let me do it before you break my can opener. Stop. I'm going to stop. I got it. Okay, then it's not even, it's not even connected now. <laughs> you're not even, all you're doing is spinning your wheels. You're gonna to wanna to do that for all of these cans by yourself? Or are you gonna let your mother do it, stubbornness? Okay, let me do it. Stop, stop. You're gonna break your can opener. This is, this is just... <laughs> what the hell are come you on, doing? Guys. Like, really, come you see on. what he did? Come on now. Well, at least I can I can dribble out the ooze. Yeah. yeah. Now you don't use this stuff. Look at that. That's that's gross. It kinda of looks like something bled into the sink. Yep. Well, it's not on. I know it's not on. I was waiting for you. You told me you wanted to do it, so I'm letting you, you do as much. <sighs> what does the oven need to be on for? The oven doesn't need to be on. Honey, that's the stove top. Not, the oven is down there. You don't need the oven yet. Turn that on to max. And then when we get to the oven part, you can, we'll... I'll just turn it on and let it preheat. No, it'll just heat up the kitchen. <laughs> and tell them how you want to open your own diner and what, why you're learning no. all this stuff. Why not? It's good advertising here. Tell them. Come on, speak into the camera. I'm not that open. Sorry, I'm not comfortable with that. You're not comfortable telling people that you want to open your own diner and it's been your lifelong dream to do so? You just told them, see? Tell them what you want to do. You just told them. There's nothing else to say. There is it? What is it that you, why are you here? I got here? the idea from the TV show Gilmore More Girls that my mother and my sister used to watch. How old were you? Uh, I don't remember. Must have been like 44. Oh, maybe, I maybe don't think you were in school, so you were probably grade one or two. Okay, so there you go, six or seven. Anyways, Luke's Diner gave me the idea and I wanted to do it since. And we've talked Food to is the only thing that's ever interested me. So, yeah. Yeah, he was kind of a bad kid in school. He didn't like a lot of different um, things. I just didn't like school. But. The whole concept is. A little much. If you ask me. 
Colin is one of my witchy kids. He, him and his sister decided when they were about 14 years old that they wanted to be initiated. And he is also my stray collector. When I made the video earlier about... Not just animals, people too. <laughs> yeah, when I made the video earlier and I told you about all the different kids that used to come to my house that weren't mine, but they hung out at my house all the time, it was usually his friends. And we'd go. I'd take them down on the trail. All my <laughs> well, no, because Daryl, Daryl, and and Kenny, and all those people, Chantel. Hey guys, if you're watching. Um. Anyways, when I took them down to the trail to do wild crafting, and we we would pick uh, fiddleheads and stuff like that, and stinging nettle. I taught these guys how to how to recognize stinging nettle. Tell them how I taught you how to recognize stinging nettle, Colin. Oh, we worked them with it. <laughs> Watch, yeah. them, watch them itch. Yeah. And We're a little cool, but I mean... Most people fun. do not know what stinging nettle looks like. They'll walk through it, they'll get stung, and they won't know what stung them. Because they haven't got a clue, right? Um, here in the city of Oshawa, there's a lot of kids in the south end. Well, most of Oshawa. They go down on that trail and don't even know what they're I know a lot of kids didn't even know what, what touch-me-nots were. Which is sad. When I was a kid, I loved playing with Touch Me Not. So, so we would get all of my son's little friends to touch them, and they'd jump and scream, and then they'd become obsessed. Yeah. Can you that one? Um, I'm just putting everything in the pot right now. Um, I always rinse and reuse my cans. I have a project that I'm going to be doing with cans in a later episode. Um, later episode. This could be a TV series. It could. This is how millions. those. This is how those. Um, those guys that Chris likes to watch. Uh, what is it? Epic Food Empire. Uh, he watches it. He's obsessed with these guys. They were used to be Canadian. Epic Meal Time when they started on YouTube. Yeah, they started on YouTube. Pretty funny stuff. Yeah, go check watch them out. Watch if you get a chance. So, anyways, as I was saying. Mm, that's good. That one has brown sugar and spices in it. Ooh, that's going to be good and chilly. This one's just a plain one with tomato sauce. So, anyways, as I was saying, I'd take these guys down to the trail, we'd go get the fiddleheads, and we'd go get the stinging nettle, and I'd wildcraft, and then I'd bring them back, and everybody would have stinging nettle um, tincture or tea, uh, dandelion dandelion wine. It wasn't actually alcoholic. It was more of a tea. It was a tea, and I told them it was wine, but uh, because they were all children. Good stuff. And um, I used to put raw honey in it when they were little, if they were sick, because it's really, really good for you. It's almost like a berry collecting. Oh yeah, down on the trail there's also natural, um, natural patches. Raspberries, raspberries blackberries, blackberries, gooseberries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little sour, acquired taste, I guess. That's because Not he was me. eating them when they weren't uh, quite me. ripe. Not for me. Gooseberry jam is actually really good jam. No. Not for me. Alright, um, this is getting a little long, so we're going to do a part two. We'll come back and show you where we're at. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Um, and Colin uh, is starting... Angela's kitchen. No, it's not. Granny was 73. Oh yeah. Sorry. It, it's like it's like a, it's like I'm looking at a giant when I gotta lean way back to get your face in the fucking frame. Oops. Okay. So Oops. Sorry, everybody. We're starting the meat for the chili. Yeah. And uh, how much meat you got in there? What's that? It's a like half a of a two-pound right? roll, so, so a pound. pound. A pound, of meat. pound of ground beef. And then we put a lid on the cabbage. You see the color change in the cabbage now. It soon will be. You don't have to cook the cabbage through, but the uh, softer it is, the easier it is to roll. And over here, we got all of the the, the guts in the, of the chili is in there. All we need to do is add the meat and put it on, mm, and the spices tasty. and some veggies. And we're gonna add some of the peppers in here. And I've got some celery in the Excuse fridge. Me, cut those, yeah. Um. Well, mm. first I'm gonna show. In this meat, I will be putting, uh, or Colin will be putting, some rice. We're going to cook this up for a little bit, and then we're going to add it to the meat. And then we're going to put a little Philly cream cheese in the meat inside. It's going to be part of the filling of the cabbage roll. 
and um, we're going to get started. Excuse that, that's my ginger. I'm going to make some ginger brew next. Um, we're going to get started on the bechamel sauce, which is basic ingredients. It is flour, cream, butter, and salt and pepper. That's it. That's all that goes in a bechamel sauce. You just It's just how you make it. So once we get some stuff moving here, I will start that stuff with Colin this so that you can is, see how that this works. This stove is way too small. <laughs> well, I'm my hand on the pot you're, while I'm you're in to... you're in a little witch's kitchen. Whoa, 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 whoa! Then you got a ghost. Cheers! <laughs> trying to knock off your uh, lid. Okay, so that this is ready, pretty much. For to um, it, it's soft enough to take off of here, so that you can move stuff. So if you want to move that to the back burner. Yes. Watch the lid; it doesn't fit on there right. It's an old pot. Yes, that pot. <laughs> Don't be a smart ass. That pot came hey, from your some, grandma's house. Need some laughs house. in the kitchen. You need some laughs in the kitchen. Gotta have laughs. As long as you're not burning yourself, you can move that over to the bigger burner if it would be easier. Actually, no, you know what? Right Let's put the chili on that burner now. The chili pot. Get the chili pot. Get the spoon out of here. Put it in the sink. Sink's clean. Put the chiller on here. We'll put that on high. No, put it on medium or it'll splatter uh, everywhere. Yeah, you need I a lid know. for that. No lid down here. Big, big lid. Big lid without destroying everything. Don't there you go. Up. That way it doesn't spit all over the place. And we're using my little card table because, as you can see, my kitchen is teeny now. tiny with this big giant son of mine in it. And, um, okay, so the mixture that he's doing right now, you can add your spices right to the meat if you like while you're cooking it, but I don't normally. I put it into the chili because we're going to slow cook that, that baby until it all everything is tasting good. All right, that's good enough, honey. You can shut off that and throw all that meat through a drainer. Here. It's not fully cooked, as you can see. There's still some pink meat in there, and uh, you want to drain it so that you don't get a whole bunch of oily, because we put water in there so that it didn't stick. We don't add oil to the meat. Um, otherwise, it's not lean ground beef anymore, right? So now that it is semi-cooked and there's still some pink, you're gonna put it into the chili sauce. Use your spoon. I just dump it. You're going to dump it, but you're going to want to get all of your meat in there, and it's just easier if you have a spoon. And then you're going to stir it in. Okay. Now, while he's doing that, I am going to take you to my pantry. And it is over here. This is my pantry, and here we're going to get some spices. All right, there's some chili powder and some chicken spice and some cayenne pepper. And I have other spices in my kitchen. Here's my boyfriend, Chris. Hello, Christopher. Hello. Yeah. That's a great combination already. I know. Isn't that good? It is. Very good. All right, I brought you some spices, my dear. Now, in a pot that size... I don't measure anything. I do it by the palm. And I have been by teaching I have been teaching Colin how to do that. So Colin it's not an easy trick. You're gonna take it's a little bit of that. Bigger. You're gonna get a good sized palm of that in there. A little bit more. Okay, put that in. And now stir it up and give it a little taste. Always exactly use that. that that's chili powder. Oh, okay. that's stir it in good. Always use a clean spoon to taste your food, if, especially if you're making food for other people. It's good housekeeping. Colin, look this at the case, mess you're making. Look at this that. Case, hey, you're hey, tainting, in the kitchen, it's messy. You're tainting nope. the cabbage. No, it didn't touch it. It's on the lid. And look at this mess. Anyways, in this case, <laughs> I am cooking dinner for the other side of the family. And what side is that? 
That is my daughter's side. Yeah, and her, their names are? Ray, Claire, and Tyler Beggy. And do a shout out. Say hey, guys. Hey, guys. Yeah, because they will be watching this. They will be watching this and seeing how you cook all this, I'm sure. I've cooked them quite a bit of stuff. I've made, I, last meal I made them was a meatloaf. Yeah. Mushroom stuffed meatloaf. It was fantastic. First meatloaf I ever made. And what was in it? Mushrooms. Um, there's some onions and some garlic. <coughs> Honestly, there's... Cream, herb and garlic cream cheese? Yeah, there's some herb and garlic cream cheese. Um, 